Welcome back. This is Mrs. Rubright with Advanced Geometry. Today's lesson is 2.2, Analyze Conditional Statements. Rewrite the conditional statement in if-then form. A, all birds have feathers. B is going to be two angles are supplementary if they are a linear pair. So let's um, look at how they do the solution. So first we have to identify the hypothesis and the conclusion. So your hypothesis is your if and your conclusion is your then. So if I have the statement, the conditional statement, all birds have feathers, then I'm going to turn this into if an animal is a bird, then it has feathers, right? This is your hypothesis, this is your conclusion. If an animal is a bird, then it has feathers. So for B, does anyone want to take a stab at this one? Two angles are supplementary if they are a linear pair. Yes. Okay, so that's exactly what you would think based on A, right? So she said that if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Wait, no, she said if two angles are supplementary, then they are a linear pair. So she said it in the order that it's written, which is typically how you do it. You normally do it in the order they're written, unless there is a word that says to flip it. And the word that says to flip it is this if. This if, if it says like if or because, or like if it has like a word like that, then you know that that becomes the if. So the if two angles are a linear pair, then the two angles are supplementary. So this does like a flip-flop. Do you guys see that? The if causes it to flip-flop. They can't just make it pure and simple. They have to kind of make it where you actually have to think a little bit and give you a little bit more of a challenge because, you know, it's fun. So if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. You will get the hang of this, I promise. All right, so all angles, all 90 degree angles are right angles. All 90 degree angles are right angles. What do you guys think? Anyone? Oh. Sorry for yawning. This is just so, you know, so exciting. I just can't hold back my, you know, energy. I just have to yawn. Yeah. If the angle is 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. Perfect. Beautiful. If the measurement angle is 90, then it is a right angle. Wonderful. All right. On this next one, 2x plus 7 equals 1 because x equals negative 3. Because. Is because one of our flip words? Yeah. So if x equals negative 3, then 2x plus 7 equals 1. Okay? If x equals negative 3, then 2x plus 7 equals 1. Why? Because 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 7 is 1. It equals 1 because x is negative 3. So if x equals negative 3, then 2x plus 7 equals 1. So be very careful of those key words that tell you, hey, flip me. Write the conditional statement in if-then form. When n equals 9, n squared equals 81. So anyone want to give this a shot? Yes. Perfect. Beautiful. He said if n equals 9, then n squared equals 81. Wonderful. All right. How about tourists at the Alamo are in Texas? Who wants to try this one out? Do you want to try it? I know you do. You have a twinkle in your eye saying, this is just for me. Tourists are at the Alamo are in Texas. Perfect. If tourists are at the Alamo, then they are in Texas. Because it's located there, right? So that's where they have to be. Write the if-then, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive of the conditional statement, guitar players are musicians. Decide whether each statement is true or false. All right, so the first thing, ooh, did my thing just freeze again? Hold on, I'm going to pause real quick. 
So once again, geometry is the year of vocabulary, and we just need to know what these mean. So your if-then statement is if P, then Q, right? If-then is if P, then Q. Your inverse. For the inverse of the conditional statement, you negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. So your inverse, if not P, then not Q. Your converse, you flip-flop them. So if not Q, then, or sorry, if Q, then P, right? So your if then, your conditional, is if P, then Q, right? Your if then statement is if P, then Q. Your converse, if Q, then P, you just flip-flop it. Your inverse, if not P, then not Q. And your contrapositive is going to be if not Q, then not P. You flip and negate. Flip and negate. So, guitar players are musicians. So our first, our if-then. How do I turn guitar players are musicians into an if-then? If someone is a guitar player, then they are a musician, right? Something like that. So if you are a guitar player, then you are a musician. True or false? True, right? All right, so now how about our converse, or if Q then P, our flip-flop. How do I flip-flop this? Yeah? If you are a musician, then you are a guitar player. Perfect. Is that true or false? False. What if you're a pianist or a cellist or a bass player or singer, right? All right, what's our next one? So going back, if you are a guitar player, then you are a musician. So now we're going to try the, um, we did the converse. Did we do the inverse yet? I don't think so. so. The inverse is leave them alone and negate both of them, right? Negate them both. So if you are not a guitar player, then you are not a musician. True or false? If you are not a guitar player, then you are not a musician. False. Because just because you're not a guitar player doesn't mean that you're not a pianist or a cellist or other people who play instruments and stuff, right? So scientific here. All right, and then our last one, a contrapositive. So the contrapositive, you flip and negate. So anyone want to take a stab at that one? Yeah? If you are not a musician, then you are not a guitar player. True or false? <coughs> True. Because if you're not a musician, then you can't be a guitar player because a guitar player is a musician. All right, you guys are getting good at this stuff. Right, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive of the conditional statement tell whether each statement is true or false. If a dog is a Great Dane, then it is large. True or false? If a dog is a Great Dane, then it is yet large. What do you think? You guys don't know what a Great Dane is, do you? So a Great Dane is enormous. It is like a horse of a dog. So just to show you really quickly, oops, I don't think I can do that. Hold on. Let me pause this. So I can, all right, so those of you who do not know what a Great Dane is, these are Great Danes, okay? So these are very large puppies. And um, so see, this is her Great Dane. So a Great Dane next to a person, okay? They're huge. They're like horses. All right, here's someone in their Great Dane. Great Danes are huge. Okay, you guys get, a, get the idea? It's a very large dog. All right. So going back to our lesson, if a dog is a Great Dane, 
than it is large. True, because Great Danes are enormous. What about the converse? <coughs> How do I do the converse for this? Perfect. If a dog is large, then it is a Great Dane. True or false? False, because there's other large dogs, like German Shepherds are kind of large, not as large. Um, you know, some Golden Retrievers can be large, even though a lot of them are more medium. Um, but yeah, there's other large breeds of dogs, like um, Greater Swiss Mountain Dogs, um, St. Bernard's, right? Like there's big dogs. So false. Um, contrapositive. Wait, did we do inverse yet? No. Sorry, I just exposed it. Oh, well. If a dog is not a Great Dane, so you just negate bull. If a dog is not a Great Dane, then it is not large. Wait, we just did that. We did do that. You guys are, like, messing with my brain. Okay. Contrapositive. Contrapositive, you flip and negate. So what's that going to be? If a dog is not large, then it is not a Great Dane. True or false? True. Because if it's not big, then it can't be a Great Dane because Great Danes are enormous. So this is the least mathy math class you will ever take because this doesn't really feel like we're doing math, right? This is more like logic and reasoning. Um, it's just completely different. So if a polygon is equilateral, then the polygon is regular. If a polygon is equilateral, then the polygon is regular. True or false? False. Maybe it's not equilangular. It could be equilateral and not equilangular, so that could be false. <coughs> All right, so your converse, if the polygon is regular, then it is equilateral. If it's regular, it's equilateral. Yeah, it's equilateral and equilangular. True. Inverse. If the polygon is not equilateral, then it is not regular. If it's not equilateral, it's not regular. True. Contrapositive. If the polygon is not regular, then it is not equilateral. True. Wait. False. I fell for it. Why is it false? Because it could be equilateral and not equilangular, right? It could still be equilateral, but not equilangular, and therefore would still be not regular. So it's like a trick. You have to really know your vocab inside and out. Decide whether each statement about the diagram is true. Explain your answer using the definitions you have learned. Okay. So line AC is perpendicular to line BD. AC is perpendicular to BD. Decide whether the statements about the diagram are true. Is that true? Yeah, because perpendicular lines intersect at a right angle. For B, angle AEB and angle CEB are a linear pair. AEB and CEB are a linear pair. Yes, because two angles that form a straight line, right? Two angles that form a straight line are a linear pair. They are supplementary. Ray EA and ray EB are opposite rays. Ray EA and ray EB are opposite rays. True or false? False. Opposite rays share a common endpoint, but go in opposite directions, forming a straight line. Use the diagram shown. Decide whether each statement is true. Explain your answer using the definitions you have learned. Angle JMF and angle FMG are supplementary. J, M, F, this angle in here, and F, M, G, this angle right over here, are supplementary. Do the two of these form a straight line? Yes, they are a linear pair, therefore they are supplementary. Point M is the midpoint of F, H. Is M the midpoint of F, H? False, guys, false. Don't fall for it. How, do you, how would you know that? You don't know that that's smack dab in the middle. It could be off by a tenth. We don't really know because there's no mark saying, hey, I'm split in the middle. 
So false. We don't know where it's located. We can't say that that's smack dab in the middle. We don't know if FM is congruent to MH. All right, so angle JMF, JMF, this angle right here, and angle HMG, HMG, this angle right here, are vertical angles. Yes, they are. They are across from each other. When two lines intersect, therefore, they are congruent. They are vertical angles. True. All right. Line FH and line JG, FH and JG, are perpendicular. False. There's no little box saying, hey, I'm intersecting at 90 degrees. Write the definition of perpendicular lines as a biconditional. So a biconditional is if and only if. Okay? So if and only if. So <coughs> the definition of perpendicular lines. If two lines intersect to form a right angle, then they are perpendicular. Right? If two lines intersect to form a right angle, then they are perpendicular. Perpendicular. Your converse, if two angles are perpendicular, then they intersect to form a right angle. So your biconditional is if two lines are perpendicular, so it's like your vocabulary word. If your vocabulary word, it's your vocabulary word. If and only if, they intersect to form a right angle. Make sense? So like if I was doing this with like the definition of a right angle, it would be an angle is a right angle if and only if it's 90 degrees. Make sense? Rewrite, oh, <laughs> rewrite the definition of right angle as a biconditional statement. That's the very next slide. I haven't seen this in a year, so didn't realize it was the next slide. So we just did that. We could also do, say, if it was like um, obtuse angle. So an angle is an obtuse angle if and only if it's measures between 90, greater than 90, and less than 180. And that is everything on today's lesson. Today's lesson was, once again, 2.2, Analyze Conditional Statements. We hope you enjoyed the lesson. Please like and subscribe, and have a great day.